afternoon, good evening, good night. How are you guys? Um, let me just make sure everybody's in here. I don't want to leave anybody in the waiting room. Good afternoon in Cape Town, no, South Africa. Okay, what's up? How you guys doing? Where you guys from? Where you guys from? Let other people know in the chat. I'm trying to make this short because it doesn't need to be long. Real simple, easy to understand and digest. It's just something we forget to look at in all of our, you know, button pressing, pushing, if you want to call it, triggering. Yeah, go ahead, Ivan. You can record it. I'm going to record it on my end, too, um, and release it on YouTube. And this is actually going to be the last video that I um, publicly release. Had a, uh, I'm cut this part out, but had a conversation with my family about time. No, sorry. Time. I know we all talk about time and price, but <laughs> time. We had a conversation with the, the stream as well about it. And um, I guess I was speaking to myself at uh, time, time, time. Something that's non-refundable. Can't get it back. The time where your health was good. Um, where you had things that you were able to do. Time that you just had in general. Time. You know. I think with a lot of um, people whose time is sort of expiring, because all of our time does expire. I hope you all know that. The consistent thing that you hear them discuss. Let me move this uh, watermark off. Number one thing you hear them talk about is if I can go back and do something differently, I would. If I can go back, I would. I would. I would. I would. And a lot of it has to do with just the fact that we don't number our days we always think we got time so um, i had a very candid conversation with my family and uh we change up some things we give time to those who value those are you know those in the group um but outside of that my time that i have that's free um we'll go to fortifying uh, my family, my future, you know? So let's get right into this. Um, if you, um, if you guys know the way that I teach intro to market structure, by the way, this is just a quick overview of that. Um, I'm not gonna go too in depth on you know, choosing zones and all that other stuff. I, I need people to understand that market structure is pivot points, it's swing points, it's, you know, whether it's higher highs, 
higher lows, lower highs, lower lows. However it is, you understand it, whatever it is you call it, it's just one thing. It's price at a beginning point. It starts somewhere. Where does it start? It's one point, one area. There. That's where it begins. Here. Make that a little bigger. There. And oftentimes this beginning point, it's usually in a form of a wick just like that and sometimes you might see it like this Sometimes you might see it like this, something, something along the lines of this. With no wick at the bottom. Let me just try to get a darker color here. Sometimes you might see it like this with no wick present down here at the bottom, but this on a higher time frame is a wick to move that went down and immediately came up. Once you get that close above and you see the two bodies that are present there, that's a wick on a higher time frame. So as we know, or as I've taught, price begins here. And you have a move that trades up, right? You get a low, we get a high. We get another low, we get a high, right? We get another low, that's a low, a high, a lower low, a higher high. The reason why this is called a higher high is because it's higher than the previous high. This high is higher than the previous high. Now, this all might sound, you know, very elementary to, to those who have been trading and those who understand this, but it's important to have this in in your mind because a lot of the times we put in this low we put in this high oftentimes above a previous high and and i'm going to teach about you know the the previous high what happens at the previous high we put in this high above the previous high and the minute we go to put in a low and we're heading for another high, we begin to see people selling this down, placing their stops behind here because we're forgetting about what happened in the past. We're forgetting about the past data. So here is how market structure generally moves. You have this high, you have a higher low. This higher low isn't established until we put in a higher high. So we break above the previous high and we put in a higher high. Now what the, what the market often does is we can put in a higher low. We go to put in a higher high. We put in a higher low. We put in a higher high. 
And what some might see is we violate the previous law right here. We violate the previous validated law. So when we trade up above the initial high, this low becomes validated once we get a body closure above the previous high. So when we put in a new high, this high becomes validated when we begin to pull back, when we, get, when we begin to trade back into the previous area. Now, would we call this, if we did not trade into the previous area, would we call this a higher high, a higher low, and then another higher high? Will we call this a higher high? Yes. We will. We will acknowledge this as a higher high and a higher low simply because the market is making its high, its low, its high, its low, its high, its low. It's climbing as a stairs, a stair pattern would. This is considered a low and then another high present here. But this is not considered the structure of the market, the structure of the market. So what you have within this area, let's say I'm on the 60 minute time frame, so it's the, the uh, one hour. Within these higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, you see this low here, within this pattern, Oftentimes, what you see, let me just change the color of this. Oftentimes, what you see on the time frames that I trade on is a high, a low, a high, a low, a high, a low, a high, and then you see. On this pullback, you see a low violated. And I'm going to show candlestick entries to this as well. But you see a low violated. You see us tap back in to the previous area. And now we begin forming lower lows and lower highs. We often get to a particular area in the larger or, or the higher time frame, you know, order flow, the higher time frame trend. On the lower time frame, you end up seeing us what we call reverse. We trade up above the previous high. So when we begin to trade up above the previous high, we consider that a break in structure. But what structure is being broken? That's the lower time frame structure. Are we still bullish or sorry, bearish as we're drawing back from the higher time frame are we still bearish no now we're bullish but from what time frame on the lower time frame you'll see us go into a cycle of bullishness a cycle of bearishness cycle of bullishness cycle of bearishness cycle of bullishness and here's where people get wrapped up someone might see the high get taken on a lower time frame, and we're expecting a draw or a pullback into the area before we continue, right? Because likewise, the way price builds on the higher time frame, like this, it's the same way it builds on the lower time frame. 
It's just that these pullbacks are a lot smaller versus the higher time frame pullbacks can go over a series of, if this is the hourly, it could be over a series of sessions. And the following day, you could end up getting your higher time frame pullback. Into the next day, you get your higher time frame continuation. And the following day, you get a higher time frame pullback. So depending on the time frame that you want to trade on, if you're trading on the 60 minute chart, what you have to remember is that depending on the type of range that we're in or the type of um, Sorry, let me move this. I'm gonna open this up a little more. Depending on the type of range that we're in, or or the 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 type of market cycle we're in. You may very well see us. trade straight up out of this, clearing these highs, and just continuing to that higher time frame high. And then you could see us go straight down after the same, within the same momentum, we come straight down back to the previous range that we were expecting. And what? Begin. Hi. Hello. A high, a low, a high, a low, a high. Now let's look at where we are within the higher time frame trend. This is what I see a lot of people getting confused with. Let me bring this back this way for a minute. This is what I see a lot of people getting confused with. Just bring this higher. Take this out of the way. Now, when we see this push higher and then push lower immediately, are we saying that we're now bearish? Are we now looking for the market to go down because we have this huge spike up? No, we're not. We had the market shift higher and then come all the way back lower. And then we begin to saw it. We begin to see it build again, build higher, right? A lot of the times when we're on this lower time frame, we forget to zoom out. So because we watched this huge push happen, followed by this huge drop on 
the lower time frames as we trade on. I mean, most people will follow me. I believe you guys trade in the lower time frames as well. We begin to start anticipating price trading lower. And in our mind, now that we've seen this whole pattern take place, we begin to try to sell everything. So we're selling in here and we're ending up in drawdown. It's coming back to our entry and taking us higher. We're moving our stops back and we're seeing price trade all the way back up into the new high that, that was created after we broke structure to the top side. And we're being dragged. Sorry, we're being dragged into drawdown until our stop gets hit or until we manually close because we're not paying attention to the higher time frame. So another thing that happens is when we get to the top of the range and we go to put in a new high, we see price immediately shift lower, tap back in, lower, tap back in, shift lower, tap back in, and then we're back to the leg that began taking us up. Would we consider this high, this new high put in, would we consider that a break of structure to the top side to continue? No. We would not. If we wicked above and we didn't get a strong body closure, above the previous high, it is not considered a break of structure. It's not considered a new high. Neither is this low validated. Because as we spoke about early on, the low gets validated when a new high is put in. And if a new high is not put in, then this low present is not validated. So immediately we begin to move this over some. Immediately we see price come back down to the low that brought us up. And we see price run this inside low, right? We see this go below it, and then what does the market do? We begin to trade higher. Just like that. We begin to trade higher. So if 
we're looking at this now. Let's let's actually just let's move this for a second. As we're heading down, we have this belief that now we're bearish. And then we begin to see price climbing back up to the previous high. And we trade through it. Where is the validated low in this scenario? We traded up above this previous high. We violated it, but we didn't validate the low. We did violate it, but it's not considered a break of structure. We ran stops from above. And then we trade it back below and we ran stops lower. Let me just bring it down just a little more. We ran the stops below. With price moving up back to this high, why did we stop here? Because our validated low was actually here. And all we did was come back to, yeah, I'm not going over zone, so I'm just going to briefly remember this. We briefly mentioned this, sorry. All we're doing is coming back to the demand that broke structure or the low that violated the high. This low is valid until, you hear that? Until we get a body closure below it or we get a break of structure above it. So what we often see and get wrapped up in is the lows and the highs being created and broken on a lower time frame. Without looking at what our higher time frame order flow is, what our what our higher time frame highs and lows are telling us. So when you guys see me so zoomed out, um, you know when I'm when I'm trading live, it's to pay attention to that. What I'm doing here, let me just move this again. Sorry. What I'm doing here, when you guys see see the chart zoomed out like this what i'm doing here is i'm noting the low is down here on the higher time frame the high that's present the low that's present and while on the time frame i'm on i'm seeing the high get broken here. And we come back to put in a low. What we're not seeing from the higher time frame. Remember on the lower time frame, this pushed straight up. And it came straight back down, right? 
what some are not really seeing from the higher time frame is the same thing that I just mentioned. Opening up. We have this high that takes us up. And we have this low that brings us down. So what is this considered now with the higher time frame view and what we opened up talking about? This on the higher time frame looks like one candle, a wick. It's just a wick flushing above. But on the lower time frame, it's a full structure break. It's a full structure break. So if you guys watch the zero to hero course and the zero to hero video and the intro to market structure video, you guys will get a better understanding of how these lower time frame highs and lows are delivering the higher time frame highs and lows. But one thing that we noted earlier this week, let me actually get rid of this. This is the hourly time frame. If we go down to the one minute, actually, let me, if we go down to the one minute, get some of this out of here. Because I briefly went over this on one of the streams earlier this week. We see now that we have a series of highs and lows, right? right. Series of highs and lows. But now we're as zoomed out as I usually am when I'm you know, when I'm trading, you guys might see little things like this that I note out, you know, just you know, little things that I draw out this way, or or I might take something larger like this and, you know, I might draw this out here. You know, you guys are just seeing lines, but what I'm paying attention to is the higher time frame highs and lows. If I go back to the, the, the one hour, what do we see here? Oh, it's easy. It's easier to follow the highs and lows from here based on the one hour. We have this low here. We have this high here. Body closure above, right? But these candlesticks take a couple of hours to form. So here we have one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour. That brings us up above the previous high. It takes us four hours to violate this high. And then what? We immediately go into a range. Oftentimes, you know, London, Asia gives us these smaller hourly candles, not as much volume in it. But if we're paying attention to a higher time frame, highs and lows, we see that we have a low present here. We have a high above here. We put in a low here, right? 
and then we put in another high. Why is this high put in? Why is this low validated? Because according to what we just explained, we have our low after the break in structure, full body closure. Then we have our high that broke structure and we have a full body closure above. So what happens after this is put in? When you guys saw me bring up this chart, you saw these highs and lows present here. These highs and lows present here. Now, again, this is over a series of days. Here's Friday. Here's Sunday. Here's Monday. And within the same day, you could you can get a high and low put in, depending on if there's high impact news or something like that. But here's Monday. We get a pullback into Asia's, the Asian session on Monday. And the next low is put in on Tuesday. So we're following the higher time frame highs and lows. These are happening across multiple sessions and potentially across multiple days, as we mentioned earlier in the video. We violate this low. We get a strong close below. We put in this low right here. We put in a high. But what did we mention about our highs and lows? We mentioned that we needed a body closure below it in order to validate the high. We need a body closure below. So what do we get here? We put in this low and we don't get a body closure until here from the higher time frame. We don't get a body closure until here. So is this high validated? No. It's not. This inside high is invalidated. So what high do we need to be ran in order to consider it a break of structure and a reversal in price? We need the less validated high to be violated. This high did not get violate, validated, sorry, because a closure below was not given, just a wick. So we end up putting in a low through Asia. I believe this is Asia. Yep, putting in a low through Asia, but then immediately running and taking out. our high or what would have been our high should we have a closure below this low so now if we follow it this low comes in and puts in this high above right here Here was where the low started. We put in a high. We shifted below. We shifted back above the high. And 
and we see that we're in a range. So now what we're paying attention to is our low that was left behind on Friday, Friday's low, that we did not break to continue down. And we took out the intermediate inside high. You guys hear me talk about that in, in Zero to Hero. So when did we get a break and close of Friday's low? It's here. Monday morning, 9 a.m. So now you take our Friday low and the highest point of the market before the break, this is considered manipulation. We just wick through and trade it back up above. So we'll take the highest point because that's oftentimes where the institutional stops are, the protected stops. We call it in, in intro to market structure, a protected high and a protected low. So when we came in to this scene here, you guys see me have this high here, and then you see me have this low here, right? So if we follow this, We put in this low, we put in this high. This low is validated because it's after the break in structure. This low is validated the minute we go up and trade above to put in a new high. This high is not validated until we trade below and put in a new low. So if you see where I put this yellow line at, you see we have a wick that trades below it, like this. We have a wick that trades below it, and then we get a body closure shortly after. Let me just zoom in some. We get a body closure. So after that body closure, you see us wick below and then trade back up above to put in a high. But the high that we need to get taken is the protected high. The protected high is above up here because this high, the protected high, the validated high is what's created when the body closes below the previous low and put that high in. So we get a body closure below. And then look, we get a wick going down and price shift back up. What I mentioned earlier was important because this wick that came down below is a body closure on a lower time frame. It's that same move going down into the move going up. It's the same bearish candle going down. Sorry, bearish candle going down. Into a bullish candle going up on a higher time frame.
But all this is from the higher time frame. Is a wick. So if we had counted this high above on a higher time frame, on a lower time frame, sorry, if we counted this high above on a lower time frame as a high, and then we saw this low put in, immediately when we traded up above this high on a lower time frame, we would automatically assume that this was the case to go bullish. We go back to it. We would assume that this was the case to go bullish, right? You have this push down below, price shifts up above. And now, when we take out this higher time frame high, this is a higher time frame high, but it's an inside high. When we take that out, it's right here. When we take that out, now, We're believing that this is bullish. We're believing that price is coming back into here to trade higher. And what do we get? Price runs the low and continues lower, right? Because according to our higher time frame, the protected high is up here. And anything between the low and the protected high is a range that we're in. Likewise, when I explained the drawing up above early in the video, it showed a double bottom in it, but no closure above. So if we pay attention to the last validated low and validated high, we know that before we have any belief that, that price is reversing, we need to take out our higher time frame validated lows our higher time frame validated highs. And that's whether in a downtrend, whether in an uptrend. When you take out the higher time frame lows, this is a higher time frame low. Take out the higher time frame low before we believe that we're now reversing to go into a downtrend. And if you stay on this side of the market, you'll have more opportunities to hold longer, more opportunities to gain more profit in the direction that price is actually going versus trying to time the bottom or time the top. A lot of the traders who you know, trade with me, who learn from me, desire to hold longer moves. And those longer moves are only present from higher time frame areas. You're gonna take one trade and hold an intraday move and you don't wanna be a part of every single turn of the market that you guys see me, you know, kind of noting. This is what you would keep on your chart. You would keep the higher time frame highs, the higher time frame lows in a downtrend as well as the higher time frame highs and the higher time frame lows in an uptrend because we have the same thing here
Well, I, I won't get into that. I'll just get into the the meat of this portion down here. We have a low present here. We have a high present here. This is following lower time frame order flow now. We have a low present here. We have a high present here. We have a low present here. And then we get that run, remember? With a run up above. We have a high present here. We put in a series of lows below, but we don't get a break in structure until a body closure happens above what? The, the validated high. This high is validated when a pullback ensues, and this high is broken when a body closes above from the continuation. So what do we end up in here? We end up having this high with no closure above multiple times throughout this session. No closure above. We traded up above here at 7 a.m. Traded up above again at 10 a.m. Traded up above at 11 a.m. And you keep seeing us go above. You keep seeing us trade above this high. But we also don't come back to the validated low. So in order to now have a bias that we should be looking to go short, we would need to violate this low. We trade near it, trade back above the high, we trade back down below, and then you see us trade back above the high and close that validates this low here. But what happens after that? What we just explained earlier, we close validating this low, right? And we put in this high. We trade lower validating this high, and then we trade above the validated high and break structure to validate the low. Now, what do we end up having? a strong close below the validated low. So while a ton of people would be looking to, you know, take longs all out of here, we need to understand that what just happened was that between this low and this high, price just reversed. Price just broke structure to the downside. Now, these, these areas in here, you know, these are called imbalances. These, just this large candle with no wick on either side of the candle. These are called imbalances. I teach those in the course, but again, I'm just going through market structure. That's it, just market structure alone. The rest of the course will supplement all the other things that you need to trade with. But market structure, you need to keep that at the forefront of your mind. So, as you see, From the stream that we did last week, we talked about the lows, the highs, the lows, the highs. Lows, highs, 
lows, highs. This is clearly in a downtrend. And it's a downtrend that begun from Friday, May 19th. all the way into the 25th all the way into the 25th we were just trending downward and if you kept these highs and lows where you needed to you you had a marker on it you would understand that the positions that you were taking up had they been short positions, they would have yielded you a lot more profit to hold than trying to find the bottom of everything. All of these bottoms were temporary. Every single bottom, temporary, 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 temporary. Every one of them were temporary until we took out a validated high let me get rid of some of this sorry until we took out a validated high from the higher time frame Let's go back to this hourly. And let's follow it. We have this low here. We put in a high right here. On candlestick structure, if you don't know what that is, you hear that in video one. And we close below it. Bam, we put in a low. After this low is put in, we put in a high. And we trade below. And this here is where you see us validate this high so we trade up above when we get the body closure below we get the body closure below we trade up above and then we violate bam down there this becomes validated so when we come down we put in a low and then we trade again and put in a high, right? When do we validate this high? We put in this low. Body closure below, high is validated. So we put in this low, and then we trade up above this high right here. Does that high get validated, this, this high right here? Does this high at the, at the green line, does it get validated? Well, let's see, the low that put it in, do we get a body closure below? Yes. We get a body closure below. At this, let me just make it a different color. Yellow line. We get a body closure below. Full body closure below. And when we trade up above, you see a wick flush up above it and then shift lower. So this high here 
remains validated. And it's not broken. It's not a break of structure because there's a wick that comes above it, but we don't get a close. Where does the close come in? The close comes in on the body of this candle here. So the minute we get a close above, now our higher time frame order flow has just given us a bullish close above, just like over here. Down here, we shifted higher. We had a bullish close above the previous high. And then we violated the low. Now we have a bearish close below. And we began a downtrend. So now we have a bullish close above. And what are our expectations now? For a pair like this, this is US 30. Um, when you guys see me trade on stream, it's usually uh, NASDAQ. But these same principles apply to everything. According to the one hour, now we have a reason to now go long. We have a reason to now be bullish. So now we begin looking for some upside. And in the, the videos that you know, I've, I've shared with you guys. Um, it'll go more into detail with this. But I wanted to, you know, release this to you guys, talk to you guys about this, because, you know, a lot of the times our losing in the market or, or our days where, you know, we, we have a rough time, it's because the lens in, in which we're, viewing the market is a bit off, a bit skewed. And it's skewed because we're not paying attention to the market structure. And, and for those who, who have, still have trouble reading the, the one minute time frame that you guys see me trade on, it's because you may not necessarily understand order flow. Order flow teaches you, you know, the one minute time frame. Order flow is what I teach more so in the mentorship. Structure teaches you what side of the market you want to be on in the sessions we love to trade, the, the New York session or or within news or whatever it is. News will still follow bearish order flow. All of these wicks that you see at the top, let me just take this out. All of these wicks that you see at the top, go back to a bunch of the, the, the news events. Go back to the market open, you know, uh, uh, sessions. You know, market open times for the New York session. You'll see that a lot of these wicks represent either news or market open, news or market open, news or market open. And these are the areas that people are getting lost in the sauce on. These up moves and then you see the market shift down. These are the, the sessions that people are getting tripped up on, even through through London. This is 4 a.m. here, London. 
3 a.m. come in, Uberish, 4 a.m. takes us up, and then we still ship lower. New York session takes us up, we still ship lower. And we're not paying attention to We're not paying attention to where we are in structure. What we're doing is paying attention to that strong move that we get up. Strong move that we get up and we believe we're trading higher and then the market immediately takes us down. Strong move that we get up, we, we think we're trading higher the market immediately takes us down. And it happens almost every morning with, within, within these, these sessions. Strong move up. And then we immediately get taken down. Because we're on the wrong side of the market. We're on a side of the market that's giving us these these pushes to the top, but we have not broken any structure to the top side to even say that, okay, yeah, we're, we're, you know, bullish. We should start expecting some upside. We should get into an entry that we can hold. We're holding these entries for moves that are not present. So as you guys see, I'll, you know, teach through the course on the lower time frame. I'll, I'll teach on the one minute, you know, show you guys things on the one minute. Um, but this market structure belongs to the higher time frame. Order flow belongs to the lower time frame. So in the course, I'm giving you guys an introduction into order flow but it gets deeper than that. And a lot of people are mixing up market structure with order flow. And though there's order flow present in market structure, market structure comes from the higher time frame. The lower time frame is order flow that delivers higher time frame structure to you or or to where it's going so when we're in these these intraday moves these 1 minute moves or or these these 5 minute time frame moves we have to be cognizant and aware of what the higher time frame structure actually is Because if we're on the lower time frame and we see a high get taken, like like for instance here, you have this high ran here. You have this low put in right here. You have this high ran here by this. And then we still trade lower. We still trade back below. So everybody's looking for price to come back into the previous range as, you know, discussing, um, you know, the, the course. And they're longing everything, getting out, getting taken out of break even. Long, getting taken out of break even. Long, getting taken, taken out of break even. They're getting trapped under here or their stops are getting hit under here because they think that we're ready to reverse from some area through here. But market structure from the higher time frame says that we're still short. So as a as a scalper, if you want to scalp intraday, you could use these little one minute moves. But if you want to hold on to these, you know, um, 200 point moves, you know, 150 point moves, 
you need to understand what the market structure is for the pair that you're trading. The market structure does not come from the one minute. It does not come from the lower time frame. The market structure comes from the higher time frame. So you might see people wait to take two, three setups within a week. Those setups are based on higher time frame market structure. And they may not necessarily know how to read lower time frame order flow. So you have to, you know, be honest with yourself and ask yourself, do you know how to read market structure first? And then you work on order flow after. If you don't know how to be profitable in higher time frame structure, then it's not going to be possible to be profitable with lower time frame order flow because the lower time frame order flow delivers the higher time frame structure. The lower time frame order flow delivers the higher time frame structure. So if you're not profitable with major structure, then this, this range, this intermediary structure that you see, it'll be very difficult being profitable with it because you don't have the higher time frame in, in the back of your mind. Because along the higher time frame areas, you'll have far more profitable entries, whether it's here, whether it's taking, you know, a rejection out of the, the validated 15 minute low down to here. Whether it's taking an entry from the violated 15 minute low here down to here, with taking an entry on a retest of the area that took structure down to here, with taking the entry from the retest of the retest down to here. You look at a lot of these moves within here that I just highlight it and they don't have moves coming back to the stop or or you know to the entry based on the the zone you're trading they don't have moves coming back there in the video you'll hear me talk about first tap break structure to the downside second tap gives you a double top and then short those have to be in zones. Where are those zones coming from? Higher time frame. What do those higher time frame zones, where, where do they have to be? Those higher time frame zones have to be according to what the market structure is on that higher time frame. You're just not taking any supply from the higher time frame and just, oh, here's the supply. I'm going to short within this supply, and then it rips through that supply. I'm going to long from this demand, and then it rips through that demand. You need to be sure, and I teach this in the, in the playlist as well. You need to be sure that the demand zone you're choosing, that the supply that you're choosing, lines up with the higher time frame market structure. So if you're still struggling with being able to trade order flow in the lower time frame, maybe you need to look into following higher time frame market structure before you jump into the lower time frame order flow. Lower time frame order flow is a lot different than higher time frame market structure. It's a lot different. It is the same once you begin to understand the fractal nature of price. 
which I explain in Zero to Hero. Once you start to understand it fractally, it, it moves through all the different time frames, but the order flow is very specific because Let me show you guys this over here. Oh, yikes. This can happen. You see this shift in market structure here? This low taken out? This can happen on the one minute and still trade higher. So you can have your high, your low, your high, your low, your high. You can get a violation of the low, tap back in, and then trade higher. So you were looking for a market structure shift on the lower time frame. But if you don't understand order flow, you'll get market structure shifts everywhere. On a downside, on the top side, back within here somewhere, back up here somewhere, down through here, you know, through here. So it's not just market structure shifts that you're chasing on the one minute it's it's you have to understand the order flow delivery on the one minute and how it gets to the higher time frame areas i talk about us getting to a higher time frame area and then trading away from it remember we get to a higher time frame high and then we trade away from it we don't immediately violate it we trade away from it go back into the the low. And then you could see us trade up above and not even come back to test that demand like it did here. We get to this higher time frame high here. To violate. What happens here? We trade lower. And then we had to violate it. And there are times where we don't even come back to it. Price go open up tomorrow, tap back into here. I mean, yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Thank God for market open on Sundays. Tap back in here and continue higher. Doesn't even come back within, you know, your your zone that you're looking to come in, your, your demand that you're looking for to come back and tap into, your imbalance that you're looking for to come back into. Nothing. You might get into, you know, it, it might start just chewing up these areas up here. Rejecting back down, pushing up there, running that low there, heading back up above to the high, tapping back in here. And the whole time you stop hoping that it comes back into your little demand zone down here. And it doesn't. But you need to know how to get involved when it doesn't come back. What happens if you had this low here and price never came back up here to test the supply that was left behind? Could you get involved with that? Could you take a trade based on that? Or do you just have to wait? Look at where, where Bitcoin is at right now. Just get rid of this. Yeah. Look at where Bitcoin is at. Right now. If price doesn't make it back into this area, into this zone, and it continues higher, is there a way for you to get involved? Let's say it just, it just, let me actually just go to another chart. Let's say it just trades higher from here. 
Are you trying to? You know, let's say come up here. Are you trying to get involved in being a long hair to go up there, and then watch it come down and run your stock? No, you you got to find ways to get in when the market does not pull back. Sometimes there's a lot of activities, a lot of involvement. You saw what pushed us up to these areas, the banking crisis. You started launching us out of this area. Everybody was like, oh, there's a double top on Bitcoin. We're coming back down to 10K. And for anybody that was shorting this, yeet. And for anybody that tried to short this, yeet. Because what is the, what, what's the, what's the structure? Obviously, you know, nobody, nobody would be trading from, you know, weekly or monthly. I hope not. But what's the structure here? What's the structure here? Structure for the higher time frame is, from the, the monthly is bearish, yes. But within here, we have these highs and lows. We get a closure above here, and then we violate. So we end up violating, putting in this short, we put in this high. We come back down. Let me just make sure we validated that. Yeah, we validated it. We put in this low. We put in this high. We come back down, close below it. We validated a higher time frame high, but since nobody's trading Bitcoin from the weekly and the monthly, and we trade intraday, or or you know, even a little bit of swing trading that could end up being over like a, a day or two or so. We realize that we get a shift in structure here. After we get a shift in the, the market structure that we trade with, not that we invest with, the market structure that we trade with, because when you get into the weekly and monthly, that's where the investing portion comes in. You want to invest from the weekly and the monthly. You want to trade from the four hour, the one hour. I'd say more of the 15 minute and one hour, but you know, this you know, to your palate. But we get a shift. In this, and now all of the crypto traders, oh, double top, yep, we're coming down to this. Oh, double top again, yep, we're gonna make sure we're gonna come down and run and just getting wrecked each time. Oh, double bottom, yeah, we, we're definitely going up to a hundred gazillion and then running their lows because they have no idea what the higher time frame structure is according to the time frame that they're trading on the time frame that they're entering on you're not entering if you let's say you were taking a monthly trade let's say you're taking a weekly trade you're not entering a weekly trade from a one minute time frame yeah i'm going long here right now and i'm gonna place my stop right behind the zone here on the daily because I'm gonna get up to the the thirty six thousand now, and then you stop your pop. Then what? Market structures for different modes of trading, for different modes of investing. Market structures for that too. But I, I break that stuff down in the course, you know. Just want to help you guys understand that that if you guys want to be traders, especially in intraday traders, you need to know what your higher time frame is saying. Because no one's saying that you can't short in these areas, 
But for the most for, for most of the people that trade, they want to hold on to an entry throughout the, the session, throughout the the um uh, whether it's a day or two, you know, hold on to a long move, hold on to, you know, a hundred points, or you know, your account size may not be an account size that could benefit off of 10 points, but I can benefit off of 15 points. You might need your account size to to you know, Bill, based on holding maybe 100-point moves, 200-point moves, whatever it is, you can get those intraday, but you have to be in the right spot at the right moment. So when I teach zones inside of the course, you want those zones to correlate with what the structure is. I also go to higher time frame structure as well. But I need people to understand that Direction is very, very important. Even if you're early, sometimes you're just early. Sometimes you're not wrong, you're just early. You look over here, Dow, right here. We had a huge pump right here. How much is this? What's this pump here? We had a huge pump. 117 points. That might be good for the day. Huge. Let me see what day this is. This is Thursday. <clears throat> so we had a huge pump. <coughs> Sorry. We had a huge pump. <clears throat> but now... When we get back into the zone that we teach in the, in the course, by the way, you want to be on the right side. So London gave us that push, that last push. And then New York, the right side to be on in the market was to be on the long side. Well, everybody's calling for the market crash. Oh, yeah, it's going down. Yeah, Joey B, he definitely governing like a weak senile man. You know, like all the stuff they, they got to say about him. You know, the, listen, Republicans are buying these buying these stocks. Democrat, Democrats buying these stocks. You know, all, all the independents buying these stocks. Whether you, you know, black, white, Asian, whether you want to be what you want to be, you know, the guy said he identifies as a 30 year old and he was 69. I don't know how that worked, but you know, whatever it is you want to be, whatever it is people are, that is, there's nothing to do with, with the money being put in here. We all in the same market, just like we all live in the same world. We all live in the same market. We all have the same tendencies. We all have the same emotions. We all see the same things. We all have the same impulses. So paying attention to that. Oh yeah, the the default, the debt, the debt ceiling default is looming. Um, yeah, I I get that you said the debt ceiling default is looming and and. America ain't going to be able to pay its bills come June 1st, but the market ain't saying that. Market structure is not speaking that language. So when you pay attention to, to market structure, that, that gives you your edge. That gives you a place to start in. And when you don't understand it, just know that, you know, there's parts of market structure that you may not understand. If, if you look here, just get some of this off the chart. If you look here, you have this low here, and you have this high here. So this is from Thursday, just before market open. And this is from Wednesday, Asia. Yeah, it's from Wednesday, Wednesday Asian session. This had 
Tons of volume, man. This was beautiful, actually. London opened up, took us down. New York brought us back up and down, then back up again. There are times where you may not understand this. You may not understand that we're just in a range. You may not understand how to read this. So when you're in here, you might be looking to go long and then you're taking out a break even. You might be looking to go short somewhere in here and then your stop is ran. You might be looking to go long here and then your stop gets ran here. You might be good looking to go short here and then your stop gets ran here. And this is just multiple losses within you know, one session. We have that in New York where we, we see price take out a high and then short back below. Then, let me see. We put a little yet? No, we didn't. But sometimes the spread takes people out in this. So they're looking to go up and getting along. Price comes back. They're looking for the high to get taken out. They get stopped out at break even because they're looking for buy side or they're looking for sell side. And, and we just in between a range. In the mentorship, I'll go over trading ranges and stuff like that too, you know, but you, you guys don't need that. You guys, you know, you become a millionaire off the, the playlist that's on YouTube, but you can find your edge in the market based on understanding market structure. If you need to use a five minute, if you're using the 15 minute, you know, because you can't reorder flow yet, order flow is you, you only going to be able to trade on one minute if you know the order flow. You need to understand order flow, period. Because we break highs, we break lows. 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 We talk about market structure shifting. How we can get a shift in market structure and you could still see price continue back up again. That happened, uh, was it Wednesday? No, Friday. That happened here. We. We took out this low here that put in this high here. We took out the low, everybody. See price coming back in. Everybody want to jump short or if, you know, somebody might've got caught in here. I hope not, so you don't trade the news, but you know, somebody might've got caught here and they're short shifted to break even and they're like, oh yeah, we're coming down and then price take them out. And then they change their bias and they expect the price to go up and price go up and then they take the down, take them down there. And then they see this shift right here. You see this high, you see this low, you see this high again. You violate the low, you wait for it to come back up and then it violates the high. And it's because understanding order flow. We get near major high. This is let me make sure I quote this correct. This is yeah, it's the hourly high. When we get near it, or 15 minute high, even we get near it, we trade away from it. And what we spoke about how price can take out these lows and still trade higher earlier in the video. This is how it looks on candlesticks. Took out these lows here. Everybody's expecting us to come back in and short. And then what do we do? We long. Market opens up. Is market open? Yeah, market opens up and takes us higher. Even with news, it's not good. Market opens up, takes us higher. Because order flow is needed to be successful on the one minute time frame. But then market structure is needed first. You know, be sure that we're profitable with market structure alone. And then move into order flow.
And we need to understand that when we're under one minute, if we're scalping, if you didn't find that from a higher time frame zone, there's no reason why you're holding to buy side, you're holding to sell side. You're holding to, to run the hourly high, you holding to run the hourly low. So one minute, if you're trading on the one minute, treat those entries as one minute entries based on one minute order flow, which can be created and broken, created and broken, created and broken, created and broken. That's all in the plan. I'm not going to regurgitate it. I'm not going to be redundant. But it's important to, you know, spec that. It's important to to trade based on that. Y'all got some of these FTMO accounts. They got, you know, all these different prop firms y'all using. And y'all are hitting y'all limits or holding entries, holding a one-minute entry that goes all the way up and it comes all the way back down to your, your break-even. So not only did you miss out on all of that profit, now you put yourself in all of that drawdown even though you lost nothing. Because the the trailing drawdown on it, and you'll see that that'll make you a lot more efficient as a trader, trading within the respective market structure, along with the other stuff that I teach in the playlist. That's very very important because the stuff that I teach in the playlist applies on all time frames, not just not just the one minute. It applies on all time frames. But this is just something that I want you guys to understand that the the higher time frame market structure is king, queen, or whatever you want to call it. It's what you should stick within and then adopt rules to it. If you're expecting to hold the zones you're choosing are not from the one minute. The zones you are choosing are from the higher time frame. And if you're taking a higher time frame zone, you're taking a higher time frame zone, right? That's within that higher time frame market structure. Within the higher time frame market structure, The one minute time frame respects higher time frame market structure. The higher time frame market structure disrespects the one minute market structure, whatever you want to call it. You want price to respect your stop? Make sure your entries you're holding is from the higher time frame. So I feel like that was a good, um, you know, a uh, uh, reminder, at least, good reminder for a lot of people to, um, you know, just, I, I teach in the course, top-down analysis, there's a video for, I think it is, I teach Market structure from higher time frame to lower time frame, lower time frame to higher time frame. Teach that in the course as well. But these are just some things that I, I want you guys to, you know, keep with you as as a as a key to, or, or a key point within trading intraday. What is the market structure for? the higher time frame before I enter into any trades. I don't need to enter into longs because the, the market structure is long. I could enter shorts as well, but it'll help me to understand how long I'm holding my shorts for. It would help me to understand how long I'm holding my longs for. 
And you feel a lot more comfortable in your trades. The same thing I did with the one minute, the, the, the one hour, you can do it with the 15 minute too. It'd probably be better to do it with the one hour, but you can do it with the 15 minute as well. Use the market structure from the 15 minute, but just understand that higher time frame market structure is king. Now, this is a very basic video, very, you know, beginner, you know, foundational video. And there are a lot more details to cover about how order flow, um, you know, can even be followed. The basics of that I teach in the free playlist and the rest of that, that's in my mentorship. So if you are new here, if you don't know me, if I, you know, I don't know you, you want to make sure you know that you don't need, you don't need to join my mentorship. You don't. To become a millionaire, to become wealthy, all of it, you don't need to join my mentorship. But you would do yourself a disservice joining my mentorship if you have not digested my free course. And by the time you get to my free course, you may not even need my mentorship. You'd be like, man, I can make so much money, I ain't even got to listen to this guy. I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't even got to listen to him. Just make money, take care of my family, do the things I need to do. Listen, don't worry about the World, Health, the, the, the World Economic Forum. Don't worry about them. They don't care about you. They just keep out their own idea thing that should be your goal i'm gonna take down the government no that don't even these governments and the corruption has existed long before your great 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 you understand what i'm saying your great grandparents they existed long before that and there's nothing you can do so mind a business that takes care of you, mind a business that pays you, and leave it there. All right? Everybody talking about Target, we need to go there, and no, just shop at another location. There's, there's Wedgman's, there's Publix, there's, you know, all them different. Budweiser, how did it? No, no, there's just... Just buy a different bed. Maybe you shouldn't even be drinking bed. You see that belly? You should be keep on drinking that. <laughs> they say if you can't see your feet after 30, you know, that likelihood of a heart attack is about 50% higher. If you can't see your feet, you can't see your feet. You should be worried about the bed. You should be worried about the feet. You can't see, you know? So I'm going to cut this part out too um, when I post it. But. Uh, <laughs> But um, I uh, this will be only for the mentorship. No, no, no I'm 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 gonna put this on YouTube. I'm put this on YouTube. 